Good evening, everyone. This is Robert, RJL518, welcoming you to another edition of World War II Leader by, by Dan Verson Games. Today, it is World War II U-Boat Leader, as we now begin our foray into the North Atlantic. So now we enter U-Boat Leader, and I've decided to play a short patrol here for... The Battle Begins, which will be the um, uh, scenario using here. Uh, this actual patrol lasted from September 1939 to May 1940. Figured we would go ahead and play this battle since we just finished the, uh, this little patrol for the U-boats. Uh, since we just finished uh, po a Poland campaign for Tiger Leader. We'll probably do maybe, maybe two or three short patrols here. And the Battle Begins. And before we go back to Tiger Leader for the second Poland campaign that is available uh, in the expansions. Brian Patterson joins us here for some U-boat leader tonight as we continue the beginnings of the Second World War. So we are still in September 1939, moving to May 1940. So this actual uh, campaign uh, takes place throughout those times. So it pretty much lasts uh, from Germany's invasion of Poland to about the beginning of the, to about the, uh, through the invasion of France, uh, which of course happened on May 10th, 1940, when he began Operation uh, Fall Gelb, the invasion of France. And of course, even earlier than that, uh, Germany's invasion of Norway and Denmark, Operation Wieserubung. All right. So, but, so pretty much uh, this takes, this, this campaign here uh, takes place. Uh, Steeler fan joins us here for a little U boat leader. I'm not going to teach the game because I don't think I'm good enough to teach the game. So just follow along with me and just pretty much agree with what I say here as I play. Uh, anybody here that knows the game better than I do that wants to comment in the bottom saying what mistakes I made, um, let me know. Uh, the Hunters and the Hunted. I have a copy of, uh, of Silent Victory, which is the Pacific version of those two games, Steeler Fan. Um, and as the, the difference between the hunters, the hunted and silent victory and beneath the med in those games, you play just one submarine on a patrol here. You actually play about a few, about a number of submarines on patrol, uh, for tonight's, uh, patrol here, we're going to play a short patrol, which is just one patrol for the U-boats and they go out into the ocean and a patrol lasts as long as they can stay out there and not return to port. I'm only going to use three submarines uh, for this uh, patrol. You can use as many as you want. Uh, you have twenty. You get twenty six special SO points for a short patrol, and I spent uh, to get three uh, good trained U boats, uh, two Type Nine A's, U forty three and U forty four, and the Type Seven B U forty seven. And for those of you who don't know about U-47, this was commanded by a U-boat ace, uh, uh, Capitan Lieutenant Gunther Preen. And Preen was the one that uh, moved into Scape of Flow, Scape Sca of Flow, and sunk the British battleship Royal Oak in October of 1939. There is a very, I have a very good uh, short little, um, short little book on it, so... For those of you who would like to read up about it, this is actually uh, U-47 and Scapa Flow, The Sinking of HMS Royal Oak, 1939. It is a raid book by by um, Osprey Publishing. So if you want to, it's a very quick, it's a very quick read about how we actually got into uh, Scapa Flow, one of the most heavily guarded sections of uh, the English Channel to sink. Uh, the battleship Royal, the British battleship Royal Oak. Now it was an old ship, but still, uh, he became a U-boat ace. He did not make it throughout the war, though. He was killed, or at least they presume lost. Uh, in, in later on, I believe it was 1940. I believe March 1941. I believe is when he was uh, put uh, put to, uh, put out to patrol for good. So, but uh, so that's what we're going to try to here to do here. So we've got three submarines. You get event cards, convoy cards, merchant cards, escort cards, and naval cards. And I, I played this game yesterday offline to try to learn it, and I think I got it. It's not as hard as some people think. You just got to know. You just got to know your comp, your uh, calculations. That's all you got to do. 
So we start with three submarines, U-43, U-44, and U-47. And we start here on the map. So the first thing we start with is the, um, the strategic segment where we expend uh, special option points to choose some missions. Um, I'm not going to choose any missions. We're going to make this a very simple patrol for these three, and we'll see if we can get at least an adequate, uh, an, an, an adequate uh, you know, uh, result. I'll take that for now. So I'm not going to do any special missions or anything like that early on. I have five SO points available if necessary to use. So we're not going to expend any special option points. We're not going to do an air search or supply ships or special missions. So that takes care of that. So now we move on to the operations segment where we actually go ahead and move the U-boats and draw the event and draw event cards to see what happens. So we'll start first with uh, we'll start first with U-43. And they're all in uh, German ports. They're all in Germany right now. That was the only port. That's the only port available uh, in this campaign since it was early. Uh, of course, the Germans do not have France yet at this time. So we're going to start with U-43. It's under Captain Lieutenant uh, Wilhelm Ambrosius. And it's a Type 9A U-boat, which means it carries a good amount of torpedoes. It carries uh, 16 ready torpedoes and... Uh, stored and six torpedoes already ready. He is cool and he is a searcher. So he's a so and he's trained. So this is a pretty good ship to take out there. And I think using only three ships should be enough uh, to show the mechanics of the game for anyone who wants to play it. And after uh, playing it a little bit last night, I actually thought it was I actually thought it's fun. And of course, Gato Leader is the Pacific version of this game. Where of course you're the Americans fighting off against fighting against the Japanese convoys, but we're early still in 1939. So right now the Germans are still the are still have the initiative. So we're gonna still gonna be playing the Germans for a while, quite a while, with more with some of this game and of course more Tiger Leader coming up. So let's start with U43, and the first thing we do is we take U43. And we move him in. We move him into the North Sea. Move him into the North Sea, and I want him to go to the Western approaches. So you move into the North Sea, and he draws an event card, and it is naval target. If the U boat is not unfit, it may expend any four torpedoes and suffer three stress points to gain three victory points. That's a great card to start off with. So we could expend four torpedoes, okay, and suffer three stress, but we get three victory points. And that, I think, is excellent. And I think we will do that. So, and we can expend, and it says, any four torpedoes. So we'll take them out of the, we'll take them out of stored. So the six will now become a two. Any four torpedoes. So remember, so that means we so that we get three. Now we do take three stress though, which is uh, which is cute. But he has a good amount of stress. He can handle six stress, so he gets three stress on him. The one thing I do like about this game, it has a smaller footprint than Tiger Leader, so I can actually put submarines on the desk. You can actually see everything with this one. Unlike Tiger Leader, you couldn't see all the cards. One day we'll get a bigger desk. And I'll have, and maybe a, a camera that can really show everything. Although this camera is still pretty darn good. All right, so so we, we spent three stress. So we sink a naval target. So automatically, uh, U forty three gets. Um, he's already at three stress, but he, we already get three victory points. So that's a good start for this patrol. And he now has uh, three stress on him and no experience uh, but no experience points. So that's a good start. Okay. So now we move from the from the North Sea into the British Isles. And the British Isles we draw one event card because we're just moving. And we get enemy aircraft. Roll a die, add evasion rating. So now his evasion rating on him is a three. He's okay. They're not they're not shaking. So I have a three. So we roll a die and it's a two. So two plus three is five. And it's a five to eight. We take one light hit. So I now draw from the I now draw from the hit chart. And we look at it, it says light, and it's just one stress. So we look out there. 
we look out and we get an experience point. So an experience point goes to uh, U43, but now he has four stress. Now, of course, if a, if a submarine becomes unfit, it must return to port as soon as possible. And unfit means past shaken. So he already has four stress, but he already sunk a naval target, which is pretty good. So he's already off to a good start. So we already got three victory points. We even haven't uh, fought anybody in convoy yet. His final movement is going to be in the Western Approaches. And he moves and gets one event card. So we draw another event card, and it says... Maintenance. You may spend two SOs to remove one stress from each U-boat. Um, I have five special option points available. I could remove, I could use two, so I think I'll go ahead and do that. Bring them down, bring it down to three, and we'll remove the stress here from that, and it'll go back to three stress. And he now, and we want him to stop here in the Western Approaches. So we already have U-43 right where we want him. Now, before the rules, pretty much the rules say before you go to tactical, which means anything here, okay, ID Jester joins us here for a little U-boat leader. Um, so before we do anything here, we are supposed to remove the rest of the state, rest of the uh, submarines before we go to the tactical uh, segment. So now U-44 will be next. And yes, I do know how to swim. So U-44 will go first and we'll move him into the North Sea. He has moving, so we do one event card. And the rule on event cards and cards is if a card is, um, if a card, if, if a deck is used up, you just uh, reshuffle. That's all you do, reshuffle. So yeah, you could see the same ship twice, you know, in, in a campaign or something. I call it a class is what it really is. And this one says, oh, this one says Lone Merchant. If the U-boat is not unfit, it may expend any one torpedo to gain one victory point. And this also says June 1942 Ultra Intercept, but we're not in June 42. So, yes, we'll expend a torpedo to gain a victory point for U-44. So U-44 will turn that into a one. Into a one, and he'll get a victory. And U-44 will get a victory point. So already... So already, we already have four victory points, okay, and we're already off to a good start. So next, U-44 will move into the British Isles, and we, drew a, we draw another event card. Maintenance, you may spend two SOs to remove one stress from each U-boat. Uh, I'm not going to do that this time, so I'm not going to do that, and we'll hold. And he, and he is in the British Isles, and that's where we're going to stay. So we don't go any further. To, we don't go any further there. So we stay on the British Isles. And finally, U-47, commanded by Gunther Preen, who of course was a U-boat ace during uh, the early stages of World War II for Germany. He will move into the North Sea, and I want him to be in the North Sea. So we draw an event card, and it says morale boost. Remove two stress from this U-boat. But unfortunately, there's no stress on him, so that card's useless in a way. But not too bad. So already, so we already have our three U-boats on station where I want them here in the Atlantic. And uh, now we're going to go ahead. So the, And I'm going to now end the operation segment. And a patrol is completed when a U-boat returns to port. And, it's a, and of course, with, with using uh, three submarines here, we can probably get through a patrol here, a full, a full campaign a full campaign, a short campaign, probably like in an hour or so, I'm thinking. Maybe less or more, depending. If it's too short, I can. I might add a fourth U-boat when we try this again. I want to play this game at least a few times. And I like just short patrols. I think they'll be just fine. So, um, now we go to the contact phase. Now, this is where we choose a U-boat and see if we can find any, any, um, any, uh, sink any, any uh you know enemy merchants or escorts or naval or naval units as well uh we're gonna start in the western approaches with u43 so right now nobody so there are no warnings or anything like that out here too so he has pretty much carte blanche and defined contacts so we're in the contact phase so what we do now is we roll on the contacts list and this will tell us how many contacts we have uh, in the Western approaches uh, for this um, for his for his turn 
on in this in the beginning of this patrol. Uh, U boat patrols. German U-boat patrols lasted about 45 to 60 days, usually. Uh, American patrols in the submarines, in, in, in American submarines, usually lasted about 60 to 75 days. So a German patrol lasted about a couple of months, maybe a month, two and a half months, depending if it got supplied at sea. Uh, United States submarine patrols, the silent service, usually lasted about two and a half to three months. You could you could get you could get it there. They they could get it. And remember, of course, the United States submarines were very very well, very very good. Were very very good ships. Uh, the subs. The early subs were a little cramped. Uh, didn't have that many weapons. But what hurt the United States early was the dud torpedoes. They had a lot of duds early in the uh, early in World War II, but. That's a while ago. That's the United States. Let's get back to Germany here. So uh, got U-43 in the Western Approaches. So let's see what we can find. So let's see if we find anything. Uh, let's see. So uh, Captain Ambrosius, U-43 Ambrosius, he is cool and he is a searcher. He is a searcher. So plus one if the U-boat has a searcher. So he definitely can do it. So we already adds plus one to the die roll. So there is no intel counter in the campaign map. Plus one if the U-boat has a searcher ability. There is no U-boat warning, and the U-boat has not been attacked, and there's no modifiers on any of the event cards that we've gotten for uh, this battle. So we roll on the, we roll a D10, and we check the Western approaches. And let's see how many. We add one to the roll. It is a five, makes it a six. So there's actually two contacts in the Western Approaches. So we use a contact marker. There are two contacts here. So what we do now is we draw convoy cards. We draw a convoy card to see what kind of cards we have. You can, you very well, you have the thing about this game, you have the choice if you want to engage the convoy or not. And if you don't, if you get, so we have two, so there are two contacts. So we get two contacts here. So let's draw the first convoy card. And we get lucky. We got two merchants, no escorts. Two merchants, no escorts. How about that? So we put two, so this tells you where the merchants go. So you got M1 for an M2. So we have two, we have two unescorted merchants here. So of course, we're going to go ahead and uh, go after two unescorted merchants. I remember early in World War II, there were times where merchant ships were not fully escorted, okay, in the Battle of the Atlantic. Not many escorts, uh, not many merchant ships uh, were escorted at early on. Mostly, okay, until later when a lot of escorts from Britain and uh, and from Britain and some and some of their allies got out there. Remember, Britain really is the main enemy in uh, this in this game of U-boat leader. It's Germany versus Britain, so pretty much every ship is going to be a British ship. I think there may be a U.S. ship in here somewhere, but I've not seen it, so I think they're all British ships. British tra British freighters, merchant, and British um, uh, naval units as well. So we will take the convoy, of course. We will go after it. He will go after it. So pretty much it should be uh, pretty good there. And let's see here. All right, so we're going to have, so, and since they are just merchants and they're not, there's no escorts, we can actually come on the surf, we can actually come in the surface. So U-43 is going to come on the surface. So what we do is we decide where we put them. And there was a battle location, so of course we, we put, of course we put a battle location on the card, so we know there was a battle here. Yep, exactly. 39 to 42 were the glory days for the U-boats. So the Allies got their act together. That's correct. We learned, especially with the Allied 10th Fleet in the Atlantic, and that really put the U-boats out of action. Um, so let's see what we got here. So also place a U-boat warning counter in the map area the first time each U-boat draws a convoy card. So we have a U-boat warning now goes into this map area. So now warning a minus two for contact. 
as now a U-boat is definitely in there. And we move the U-boat counter uh, for the attacking U-boat to any of the long-range areas of the tactical display. Unfortunately, he doesn't have infiltrator, so he's going to start tactical. Uh, and we're going to have him surface. There's no, we got him, there's no escort, so we can go right after him. Remember, though, however, uh, merchant ships, merchant ships, okay, uh, can attack the sub. So now I actually you know what I was actually thinking of staying on the surface and smacking him with the gun. But I think in this case, I'm still going to start submerged. So I'm going to still start submerged here. And use lag to get in. So he's going to start here. We're going to start right on the. We're going to put him right in the middle here, and wait for these two delicious merchant ships to uh, come into range. And uh, since there are no other subs in the area, there's no wolf packs I can form. We're not going to do them in this first little thing here. Then we draw another event card to see if there's anything special happening for this event. I'm not sorry, not event card, convoy card. And we read here. Torpedo firing solutions. Add one to torpedo die rolls. Well, that pretty much tells me that these ships are going to probably wind up going down to David Jones's locker. If you like solo games, check out the Hunters and the Hunted. I already have. I already have a copy of uh, Silent Victory. There, uh, ID Jester. I already have a copy of Silent Victory, which is the Pacific version of those two games, and uh, I prefer. I'll be honest. I actually prefer playing the United States against the Japanese, but, um, you know, for that, but I have Silent Victory, and I played it, and I loved it. It was a great game. I think it's awesome. Where you just take one sub, where in this game you play uh, pretty much a flotilla of subs. So we have the U-43 already in there. He's submerged. And we're going to, and pretty much we're going to be able to probably dupe these guys out of here. So let's see what happens. So now... And we get plus one to torpedo die roll. So he gets an extra plus one to hit. So now we go to the combat resolution phase. So the first pe the first people is the is us. The move the, we move the U-boat first. So we're gonna move. He's submerged, he's gonna move one space, and we're just gonna come up here. And we're gonna get and we're gonna have lag get us even closer. Have lag get us even closer. So U-43 gets moves in there, submerged, as we see two freighters coming in. We are now within two hexes of each one. So now we can go ahead and identify and see what our targets are going to be. So we draw the first mer we'll draw for this one, and it is, the, it is a Sultan Star class cargo liner. 12,000 tons. He's worth three victory points. Pretty big ship. Pretty big ship, the Sultan Star. So he's going to be uh, one to one to hit. So cargo liner. So we go ahead and grab. Uh, let's see where is that counter? Let's see, Sultan Star. I know it's here someplace where we are. So this one is the Sultan Star, which is a which is a which is a cargo liner. We're still two hexes away from this one, and this ship. Is going to be an Amstelan is an Amstelan class bulk carrier, eight thousand tons. He's worth one victory point. So we have a cargo liner and a bulk carrier coming up. Sultan Star class cargo liner, Amstelan class bulk carrier. So now we just got to get the Amstelan, which is right here. So those are our two targets for U forty three. Okay. So after that, we then do the lag. Lag, of course, is lag, of course, is where you take one ship for a point of reference, and you kind of like move everything further towards a long wake, uh, to towards a long range convoy wake. Uh, we're one space, we're one speed slower, so we're gonna move. We're gonna lag into here, so we're gonna be right in front of these two guys, and I'm gonna unleash some serious. Uh, the disaster on these two poor little merchant ships. Now, now we have escorts detection and move, but there are no escorts. There are no escorts and um, merchant ships and naval ships do not do detection. They do not do detection. 
They do not detect. So only escorts detect to see if there is a um, merchant ships and naval ships never roll to detect U-boats. These ships attack U-boats as described in the attack rules, but they never roll to detect. So there is no detection. So that means I get pretty much got three shots. I got three shots on these guys. So here we so no escort detection. So now we go straight into the attack. Well, here's what we're gonna do here. Um, so now it is our turn to attack. So let's see what we got here. We're not aggressive, so let's see what he does. So we got this is a big ship. The Sultan Star is a big ship, and he can he's he can take some serious damage before going down. The Amstaland is the the Amstaland is um the Amstaland okay is a little bit of a lighter ship, but there's four victory points here for us. So let's see if we can knock them out. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to fire a spread of four at the Sultan Star and two at the Amstaland is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to fire a spread of Sultan Star and two at the Amstaland. So I'm going to fire. All six of the torpedoes here and try to sink both these ships in the first salvo. So here's how we do this. So, um, first of all, uh, for torpedo, he gets no, he gets no no adjustment here for torpedo rating. So he's plus zero there. He's plus zero. We get plus one to the torpedo to the torpedo die rolls. Okay. We are minus one. We are one section away from each one of these, so it's really a minus one. Okay, if you're one heck, if you're one away. So what we do? So what we do now is I roll four dice for against Sultan Star and two for Amstelan. We add, we're going to, now, even though we, so pretty much right now, it's going to be straight die rolls, because even though we get one to the torpedo die rolls, we're one space away, so it's minus one. If we were in the same hex, or in the same hex, or the same section, which you can be, all right, which you can be, all right, you can, uh, you, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, do this. Now, of course, another thing I could do is not attack. And maybe just wait till the next turn and get into the same hex as one of same hex, same section as one of these, and I'll have a chance here. But I think I got a good enough chance to sink the Sultan Star. This is the one we gotta sink. He's worth three victory points. And remember, there are two contacts. So if we fail to sink one, okay, and now we go down to one contact left on the board. So if we fail to sink him, we can go ahead and reactivate the con pick the second contact again to sink the other guy. So let's see what we do. So the Sultan Star is going to be our target. So we're going to fire four die. Four, we're going to spread four torpedoes at the Sultan Star and two at the Amstelands. It's a straight. It's a straight die roll, no matter what. The Sultan Star has its damage. You can probably see on the screen here has four, eight, and ten. So if we can roll, if we can roll one zero on these dice, we will sink this thing. If we can roll two eights. It will sink. If we can roll four, if we can roll four fours or higher, we will sink it. So we want to avoid threes, twos, and ones at all costs. And remember, damage is cumulative. So the first shot on the Sultan Star, we go ahead and fire four torpedoes at it. And we got a four. We have a four. We have a two. And we have a nine. Now Normally, when you add the roll, when you add it, you always add it to the highest. To, to the, you always add it to the dice rolls to make you know to, to the rule of adding. Okay, on the rules here is okay for those of you who want to know. It's right here. Okay, you to, U boat TS. You add the U boat TS modifier minus one per range. Okay, minus one if fired. Plus one for fat torpedo and plus two for torpedo versus escort. Now remember, we fired a we fired a spread of four, so you so so you add four, so you add four, okay, and that but you subtract one, so minus three. So really, you add three to each. We're going to add three to each roll here. Well, guess what? We already got a nine, so the four torpedoes blew this guy up. Blam! 
This one missed, but that nine be adds because you fire a spread. I forgot to mention the spread. You always add the number of torpedoes fired minus one. So we fired four torpedoes. We subtract one, which makes it a three. So you add three to each roll. So re, you know, and of course, you know, and if, if we were in, and then of course the minus one uh, for the range. Ignore if we're using a fat torpedo, which we're not using F eighteen torpedoes. So actually, this was seven, seven, and and uh, twelve. Well, the Sultan Star just went kaboom and sank with all hands. That ship had no chance. So we get three victory points already for sinking that one. So already three victory points for sinking the Sultan Star. He's gone. So he is gone. So we sink him. Now we have the Amstelland. The Amstelland, we fired two torpedoes at that. We fired two torpedoes at the Amstelland. The Amstelland, all right, so you still add one to torpedo die rolls, but it's a spread of two. But you subtract one. So this final roll, and we're minus one here, and we're minus one there. So it is two plus the modifier, which is zero. And, and we're using all these torpedoes here, so this six will go away. All right. Okay. And so then we have two. So here, so we got, we're going to fire two, so two torpedoes ahead for the Amstelin. So that is, so gets no adjustment for the plus, for the torpedo strength, so plus zero. Um, you add one because we are adding, was firing two torpedoes at it. Minus one for the Amst, uh, because we're one away. So pretty much it's still, this. it's still a, it's, um, it's pretty much going to be uh, whatever the die rolls is. In order to sink this thing, we need in order to sink the Amstelland, we need a ten or higher, or maybe two sevens will sink it. So let's see, what we got. So the two torpedoes against the Amstelland, a six and a two. Uh, the six is going to do light damage to the Amstelland. It's going to do it's going to do light damage. The two is going to miss. The two is going to miss. So the three, it's not high enough for the three to do uh, any damage there. So three to seven would be light damage. Seven to ten would be heavy damage. And anything a ten or above is gone. So we actually did light damage to the Amstelin. So he has light, he has light damage. So now he gets minus one to his speed. He gets minus one to his speed, and he's pretty much he's pretty much hurt. But we can finish him off because we can surface and fire the gun. And he actually gets plus one to his gunnery. So the Amstelan has got light damage. His speed is reduced by one. So now his speed is now a one. So after that attack, so after that attack, we go back to movement. So now we go back to U-boat movement, and he is going to surface, and his speed now becomes a two. So he's now going to surface, and... And his speed is now down to a one. So now he's going to lag back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to surface. And I believe I can move two by that as well. So give me one second while I do, while I learn that. So give me one moment. And we'll see what we got here. We've got to see our surfacing. A U-boat can change between being surfaced and submerged before it moves. But it's counted to get a change. A U-boat may, a U-boat can move a number of areas of speed. You but can change between being surfaced or submerged before it moves. But it's counter to indicate a change. Okay. So what we do. So now he's going to move and we're going to move him one, two back here. Why am I going to move behind him? Because the lag is going to put him into the same sea area of the convoy. So he surfaces and we're now going to use the gun. We have six gunnery available to, to, uh, to take him out. 
gunnery actually does a better job on him than uh, Torpedo does. But uh, so that's what we got here. I know I'm not making much sense, but my bad. All right, so we move there to you. So U-43 surfaces, and now the Amst Now we have the lag movement. In the lag movement, we choose where the ship goes. So you choose where the ship goes is what it is. So you pick a merchant or naval ship on the tactical display with the highest speed to use as a reference ship for movement. The reference ship does not move, but all other ships and U-boats that have a lower speed or move relative to the reference ship. Do not move ships and U-boats that have the same speed or a higher speed as the reference ship. And you know what? I did that by I did that wrong. What I should have done is I should have moved up here. And that's what I'm going to do instead. Move up here. Because his speed is a two, but his speed is a one. So he's moving slower. So actually, let me see. He was here. So one, two. So where would he go? Wait a minute. Let me make sure I do that right. Let me make sure I do that right. Because I want to get him in the same hex. I may not be able to do that. Because he's moving. So it's only going to be one space. Actually, I don't move. I don't move. I stay put. I don't move is what I do. I surface, but I don't move. And then with the lag, I move him into here. So now me and the Amstelland are in the same are in the same space. That's how that works. Because you move to the lag because convoys are always going from bottom to top. All right. And the lag, you always move your units, you know, down. Do not move ships and U-boats at the same speed or a higher speed. Move all the slower ship and U-boat counters one at a time based on uh, based on their uh, speed compared to the speed of the reference ship. If the ship's U-boat speed is one lower than the reference ship, move it one area closer to the convoy wake area on the tactical display. If the U-boat speed is too lower, okay, and if you move a ship or U-boat to the convoy wake area and has movement remaining, move from the map and has exit the battle. Okay. And uh, when you move a U-boat, you may treat the U-boat as having a speed lower than the printed speed down to a speed of zero. And we move it. You decide where to move the lag. You decide where to move the lag. So now we're here, and now we get ready to attack. Now, he does get a chance to attack, though. He does have an attack, and his surface is one light. He can do one light damage. He can do one light damage because we are in the same location. So I'm actually taking a chance on, on taking a hit here from this thing. So let's see what we have here. So let me see how that works. So enemy ship attacks. Let's see here. If there are no detected U-boats in the tactical display, the enemy escorts an attack. An escort can attack a detected surface U-boat. An escort can attack a detected submerged U-boat using submerged hit numbers. So let me see about merchant uh, attacking here. Because I know he can do damage. Give me one second. I'm still here. Give me a minute. Okay, so he, the Amstelan gets to attack. He has minus one to speed, detect, and attack. Well, so remember, they don't roll for detection, but we're there. So he gets to, when we're surface, so we can, I know we can see us. So it's a minus one to attack. So our evasion rating is a three. Is a three. So in order for us to hit, in order for him to hit,
He has to, in order for him, so actually our evasion rating actually minus one, so it's a four. So in order for him to hit, he has to roll a five or higher to hit us. And he rolled a seven, and he did. And it's a light damage. So, so let's see what we get here. We pull a chit, and it says light. Two tubes. Ugh. All right. So we take a little. We, surfacing might not have been the best idea, but so two tubes. So two tubes means on that one, if a hit counter, the U-boat has suffered last. It suffered last. We suffered just two tube damage. So two of our tubes were knocked out, I believe, as I take a look here. This reduces the number of ready torpedoes by the number shown in the hit counter. This is a permanent reduction until the damage is repaired. If the current number of torpedoes in the ready box is greater than the new ready torpedoes value, the extra torpedoes are removed from the U-boat card. So we don't have any more torpedoes in there because we're on, so we're only down to four. To, so we're down to four tubes, but there were no torpedoes in there. So that was its target. So we take a little damage from this thing, but now it's our turn. And we fight, we're surfacing. We surface, we fire the gun. We fire the deck gun. And the deck gun has a, we get six shots with the deck gun. And he actually is a plus one to, for, for, gun, for, gun, uh, for gun attack. So he's plus one for gun attack, which is good. All right. And we're in the same hex. So let me see. Let me see how we fire the gun here. Let's see, gun attacks. Only surface U-boats can perform gun attacks. Gun attacks can be made out to a range of two. A surface U-boat can perform a gun attack and attack with torpedoes during the same turn. You must have at least one gun ammo left to perform a gun attack. A U-boat can only make a total of six gun attacks during patrol. You may only make one gun attack each turn. When you're ready to attack with a deck gun, specify the target of the attack. Remove one point of gun ammo from the U-boat. When you fire the deck gun, you may miss, damage, or sink the target. Roll a die for the attack. Modify the die roll and look at the gun hit numbers in the target card. Determine what happens during the attack. So he has plus one. And to hit this thing, we need at least a three. So a three to six will do more, another light damage will make it heavy. A six to eight will give it heavy damage. Okay. Which pretty much makes him dead in the water. And an eight or higher will put will sink him. So, but we get plus one to the attack. So really, we need a seven or higher to sink him. So now we fire our gun. We got a nine. We got him. Kaboom! Got a direct hit on the, on the merchant. And he will go to Davy Jones's locker. And the Amstaland probably hit him in the probably hit him in the fuel tanks. And the Amstaland is gone. So very nice job by U-43. Very nice job by U-43 there to go ahead and sink two lone merchants. Pretty easy, actually, I guess, because there were no escorts there. So now we go to the uh, post-combat resolution. We do add a stress point. And, of course, I will add a victory point for sinking it. You reload the torpedoes. Now, what about what about the damage? Now, I got to see thing about the damage. Let me just see thing about the damage. Hold them in here. It was not lasting damage, so there was the number of ready torpedo tubes. It was a permanent reduction until the damage is repaired. If the current number of torpedoes. All right. So temporary temporary damage counters are removed from the U-boat card during stress recovery. Okay. So during stress recovery. So we have – so what I got to do here is I got to put uh, – where's the tubes here? Okay. So we put that on here. So we know that two tubes are knocked out. Are knocked out. Those lone merchants are easy targets. Yes, they were. And we go ahead and put that back in there. Okay. So so we so we get it. So a stress goes there. So he now has four stress. We reload the torpedoes. We only have two tubes. So oh, two tubes are gone. So four torpedoes get loaded into the ready. So instead of six, we have four. So this five, we'll trade that five in 
for a one. And now we'll put four into the ready because two tubes were damaged. Okay. And U43, of course, goes back in the Western approaches. Okay. We record the experience points, record U-boat experience on the campaign long based on the ships that the U-boat sank during the combat resolution phase. So we actually gained three experience points total as well. So he's got four experience points, which is good for the U-boat. And record the victory points. Action decision with contacts. The act the U-boats, those contacts made for this turn. Choose one of the following actions. And we do, and we and there's nothing there, so that is it. If the active U-boat has no contacts remaining for this turn, move all counters to the tactical display. Now we have one more contact left. We have one more contact left here for him. So that contact was done. That was one contact. There were two contacts here on the Western Approaches. And right now we're looking pretty good. We already got seven victory points. We want to get at least to adequate. So now we got to, so we have one more contact. So we draw another, so this one here, we put this out. So now we draw another convoy card because there's another contact out here. And now, and now we reduce it to, and now we reduce the contacts to zero. So let's see what this other contact was. And this one's a little bit more dangerous. We got three merchants and three escorts. Three merchants and three escorts. Well, three escorts could be pretty big and uh, three and three big merchants three merchants. Um, he's already got four stress on him. He can take. Six stress, and he's got four. He's got four torpedo two. He's got four torpedoes. I'm going to go ahead and dis. I'm not going to. I'm not going to attack this group. So I'm going to decline it, and he's going to go into the search box. And his turn is done. His turn is done. Now it doesn't mean he goes back to port if he stays out there. Okay, he because we should still stay out there. So, so U-43 sunk two merchant ships in the Western Approaches. Not too bad. Now we move to the British Isles with U-44. U-44 is a Type 9A U-boat as well. There's a Type 9A U-boat. And let's see here. He has plus one to his, torpedo to his torpedo strength, none to guard, and he's a four evasion. So he's a pretty good captain. This trained as a six. So let's see now. So we now we roll for contacts for him. And he has uh, he has no search, so it's just a straight roll for contacts. That's a straight roll for contacts. So let's see if he gets any contacts here in the British Isles. It is a nine, and there are three contacts. In the British Isles. So we found three contacts there. Three contacts. So we get to take a look and see what we're going to have to fight here. We'll see. So there are nine, so three contacts. So the first, let's draw the first convoy card and see what we got. So contact number one is a huge convoy. Uh, six merchant ships and three escorts. Ugh. It would be great to maybe sink one or two of those and then get away, but three escorts is a bit much for me early on in this learning list game. So I'm going to disavow that contact. So now there are two left. Let's draw another card. Oh, there we go. One small little lone merchant. Okay. Well, we'll take it. We'll go after the poor little merchant. So one lone merchant. And he is here. So one lone merchant ship is there. So we'll definitely take it. So good thing I chose the one. And so now we'll just go against one lone merchant. And U44, and so U44, that means they're also a warning. 
So now a warning goes in the British Isles because a U-boat is discovered. And now this is the battle location. And U-44, um, I think he'll go ahead and surf. I think he'll come up surface. And he'll come from the main convoy course, the main convoy course. So he'll sur he'll be surfaced there. So he gets a lone. So we have one lone merchant ship. Just like that. And we gotta find, we'll see what, what kind of ship we have here. So let's go here. So All right. So we're going to go right after this poor guy. Discretion is always the better part of valor. No, I know that's right, Brian. All right. So U44 is going to be surfaced. He's going to stay on there. Why not? It's a lone, it's a poor lone merchant ship on his own, which I don't know why he's doing that. So now we go to the combat resolution phase. There's no wolf packs to threaten. So conduct, so conduct movement for each U-boat. He can move two spaces on the surface. So we're going to go right into his grill. As we're not afraid of a lone merchant ship. Okay. And let's find out what he is. So we now we're one space ahead. And this is a an Everine class small freighter. He's only about 4,000 tons. So it's a small, it's an Everine class small freighter. One victory point, one experience point. Pretty easy to sink. Pretty easy to sink. Uh, two, a two or a higher will do damage to the thing. So, so this is the Everine. So let me get that. Let me find uh, that. Um, let me find that one here. Let's see. Everine. 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 There he is. So Everine class freighter is what we're facing off against. It's a small freighter, and it's easy. It's an easy target. It's a it's a slow move. It's a slow moving target. So yes, you go ahead and sink the poor guy. So U forty four will sink. We'll go after the Everine. We do lag. Uh, there is no movement because both of us are moving the same the same uh, speed. So so we're right in his grill. So we actually wouldn't move. It'll be like this. So there's there's lag there. Okay. So we go to lag. There's no lag. So now we are now we move into combat. So of course there's no detection. There's no escorts. And give me a second here. You know, there are no die roll. You know, I rolled the die roll to see if he got a hit on us. It doesn't matter. The evasion is only uh, when we're underwater. So um, he could still hit us no matter. He can hit us no matter what. So they just draw a hit counter to see what happens. So, all right. So the Everine uh, will go ahead. So we are, we go to, uh, let's see here. All right. So movement, lag. Now the escorts detect and move. And now we have, um, now the enemy will attack. So the Everine, he will fire on us at range of a one. So he gets to fire on us. It's, and it says here, it says here in the rules that enemy ships attack by drawing hit counters. No die rolls are made. Enemy merchant and naval ships can attack any surface U-boat using the surface attack number shown on the ship card at a range of zero one, even if the U-boat is not detected. So we just draw a straight hit counter. And and it's light and it's it's one light and it's light and it's no effect. So no damage is done here. It does one light 
for surface, one light and no effect. So this ship didn't do anything to us. So the Everine did not do anything to us. So now it is our turn. Um, this thing, let's see what we got here. Um, we've got six ready torpedoes in U-44. Um, I'm thinking maybe using a spread of four just to make sure I put the thing out of action. Or maybe three. Maybe. we still got plenty of torpedoes left also stored uh, for uh, U-44 here. So let's see what we're going to do with our submarine. So how about we roll three? I'm afraid three may not be enough. Guarantee, I'm guaranteed at least, well, if I roll three, I get plus two to the rolls. I get plus two. I'm going to roll four. So we'll do a spread of four on the Everine. Maybe overkill, but spread of four on the Overine. So that means that the U-Boat TS modifier which is plus one, minus one per range is zero, plus the number fired, four minus one is three. So we add three to the dice. And give me one second here, too. Okay, so, we throw, so we're getting plus three on all dice rolls. So we go ahead and fire one, fire two, fire three, fire four, and we put the, and we sunk this thing like no problem. So this two became a five, all right, which was, which was heavy damage. And then we had a four, which was plus three, which is heavy damage. But the eight and nine makes that an 11 and a 12. Pretty much this ship had no chance at all. Boom! And blew him out of the water. So the Everine goes down. We sink the Everine. So he's a, he's gone. And so we get uh, for th for this one, U44 gets one experience point and one victory point. So we sank the Everine and he's toast. Simple as that. So these six now becomes a two. Because we fired up, uh, because we fired four torpedoes, and that's it for the combat. That was the second contact. But we got to still see what the first contact was. But first, we got to go back to post combat resolution. So we add a stress. So there still was a stress. To, there still was a stress. So a stress goes to the U boat. Stress goes to the U boat. Uh, reload the torpedo, so we have two. So we're going to go back to six. So I'll put this two in there. And so we have six torpedoes uh, ready to go into this. Probably could have just used the deck gun, but that's okay. Well, like I said, the first time I'm actually streaming it, second time I played the game, I think it's a lot of fun, personally. I think all these games are fun. I'm looking forward to the air games when we get to them. Tiger Leader was a blast. Um, all right, so U-44 comes out here, comes back into the British, into the British Isles. Record the experience points, reward the victory points. And now we have, so that was our second contact, so we now have one contact left to check. So the action decision is we now go, we now check to see if the active U-boat has no contact this turn, remove the counters. With contacts, if the active view books those contacts made for this turn, choose one of the following actions. Do nothing. Return to the contact phase. And draw a new convoy card and start the combat resolution phase all over again. So let's see what he also finds now. So this is our final contact in this uh, in, in, the, in the British Isles. And it's another lone merchant. Oh boy, wow. And I'm going to make sure there are duplicates in here, but I want to make sure if that's correct. And what I didn't do is I did not roll another fleet card to mark to check the bottom. Um, at this one, you know what? Tell you what we're going to do here, because um, we had this one, and I should have rolled, should have drawn this one. Add one to torpedo die rolls for the bottom. So we're going to skip this. 
because I should have drawn that for the decide what anything special was going to happen. I'm going to draw another card. And now, ugh, and now we get that. Oh, boy. Let's see. Um, six merchants and two escorts. Six merchants and two escorts. This is a big convoy. Do we want to tackle him now? Do we want to tackle it? Or do we want to maybe sink a, few, a couple or so and then get the heck out of Dodge? I'm going to bypass it. It's early in the war. I'm going to bypass it. That'll be the third, zero contacts. And now he goes into search, and that's done. Now we go to the North Sea. And right now, for the, right now, we have a total of nine victory points. So we're at dismal, but another couple victory points will get, another victory point will get us to poor. This game actually flows pretty well. This game actually flows pretty well. All right, so we have U-47. This is Gunther Prane. He was the uh, ace that sunk the Royal Oak in Scapa Flow in October of 1939. Uh, U-47, it was a Type 7B submarine. He has uh, five ready torpedoes ready to go. So let's see if he finds anything in the North Sea. So he has, now he has Infiltrator. So he has Infiltrator. So he can start at medium or short range. Okay, instead of coming in the long range, Gunther Prane was a U-boat ace, so he has infiltrator. So he can start in short or medium range. He doesn't have to start it long. So let's see if he gets any contacts. So, And uh, he has no searcher, so it's a straight die roll. So let's see if any contacts show up. It is a six, and there is one contact in the North Sea. So one contact in the North Sea for Gunther Prane, U-47, and let's see what it is. And it's just two lonely merchant ships. Well, this card is good, so we're going to put them in. So, yep, he's going to go ahead and attack a couple of lone merchant ships. So we'll start with the two. We'll start with two merchant ships, and let's see what he does here. So we're going to so we have two merchants. It's early in the war. You're not going to be as aggressive as you'd like to be right now. So we got two merchant ships. Now he has infiltrator. So infiltrator. I'll get to that in a second here. And also, there'll be a U-boat warning marker, of course, going to that. A U-boat warning marker goes into the North Sea. If the U-boat of his infiltrator special ability can be set up in medium range or short range area. So we're going to go ahead and he is going to set up at short range because there's nobody there. So U-47 is going to be at short range and I'm going to put him, I'm going to submerge him. I'm going to keep him submerged and I'm going to put him right here, right in his face. Because lag will move me into one of the, into one of them. So he's going to be submerged, which means that these two guys will not be able to attack because he's submerged. He's got to be, he's got to, they got to, um, he has to be surfaced. I believe that was the rule I checked, right? Enemy merchant naval ships can attack any surfaced U-boat using the surface attack number shown on the ship card in a range of 0 to 1, even if the U-boat is not detected. Well, he's going to be submerged. We're, we learned a little something from the last we learned a little something from the uh, from the last battle, so we're going to go ahead and he's going to stay submerged. 
So he starts there. Okay. So let's see what we got an hour here. All right. So where U47 is submerged. And now we go to the combat resol the resolution phase. And he's going to stay where, and he is going to stay where he's at. He's not going to move. He's not going to move. Okay. So lag is going to move us into one of these. And by the way, we, by, by what I should do, of course, before that happens, we are close enough to find out what, what these are. So this one is a Rotura, Rotura class large freighter. So this is a Rotura class large freighter. It's 1,100 tons. So this is a Rotura class large freighter, 11,000 tons, uh, two victory points, two experience points. It has two light, so we can do some damage. This one here. Is the HMS Astronomer? This is a Merchant Auxiliary. It's eight thousand tons. It's also got two light. This is an auxiliary, which really would be kind of like would almost call an auxiliary cruiser in a way. It's not a complete merchant. It's an auxiliary cruiser in a way. Kind, if you want to call it a Q ship, you could. A Q ship was an a Q ship was a freighter. That was the Scott was actually was an armored was an armed warship was actually a kind of like a warship, but disguised as a freighter called the Q ship. So when submarines got close enough, thinking they had themselves a freighter there, okay, suddenly the freighter uh, uh, show uh, removes its disguise, and all of a sudden you see a whole bunch of weapons aimed at your submarine, okay. So it was called they call it a Q ship. So this is a merchant auxiliary. Kind of almost like a crew. This is like a, a, a cruiser, um, an auxiliary cruiser in a way. So, ver so that's worth one victory point and one experience point. Um, we definitely want to take out the large freighter. So we definitely want to sink that. That's got the two victory points, the two experience points. So those are, so it's the HMS Astronomer. Let me find that uh, thing right here. Let's see, here he is. So there's the astronomer. Okay, so we do lag. And lag, I'm going to move into the same area as the Rotura. This is the one I want to sink. This is the one I want to sink. So now the escorts attack, but there are no escorts to attack. So now we go... And there's no enemy to attack because we're submerged. So we go straight to cautious U-boats, which he is cautious. And Gunther Prane is going to, we're going to go ahead and throw uh, the Rotura. The Rotura is a large freighter. It could take a little bit of damage to sink. I'm going to throw four torpedoes. He's got three torpedoes. Th I'm going to throw. Got five torpedoes to use, not six in the U-47, which is a Type 7B. So I want to throw. I want to make sure we sink that thing. I'm gonna fire. I'm gonna fire uh, four torpedoes at the Rotura and one at the Astronomer, and one at the Astronomer, and see if I can get it some da and see if I can give it some damage. So here we go. So four. So all five torpedoes are gonna be used. Let's see if he has any bonuses. He has plus one to torpedo to torpedo roll here to TS. So he has plus one to TS. So plus one to TS in the same area. So we're going to fire four torpedoes at the Rotura plus one. Okay. So plus one modifier, minus one per range. It's the same. So there's no range minute. There's no range difference. We're minus, we've got. Plus four, minus one is three. So you got to get four on each die roll on the Rotura. So four, on, so it's four on each die roll. We're going to throw a spread of four at this thing. So plus four on the die. And oh, by the way, we got to roll. I got to pick another event card. So hold on a minute. 
Let's draw the let's draw another convoy card. I gotta find out with anything special here. Bow approach. You both starting at long range must start in the convoy course area. All right. Well, we didn't have to worry about that. So that was next. So that didn't mean anything. Because he didn't start at long range, he started at short. So we didn't have to start in the convoy course area. So we did good. So we didn't have to worry about it. So we follow the rules. So let's see. So four at the Rotura. Let's see. Uh, well, he's sunk because we threw it. So this 10 becomes a, becomes a, becomes a 14. And on the Rotura, you have 5, 8, 11. The 11, okay, is what you need to sink it. So anything 11 or higher, he has sunk. So we pretty much blew him right out of the water. So the Rotura is gone. Kaboom. So we sunk the large freighter. It's out of there. We'll get two victory points and two experience points for that. Now the one, and so he's sunk. Now the astronomer is a little different. The astronomer class, auxiliary cruiser, uh, he's one away. We only fired one torpedo at him. So he only fired one torpedo. So you still get a plus one modifier for Prane, minus one to the range is zero, okay, plus the number one, minus one is zero. So we only get, so actually it's a straight die roll on the Astronomer. It's a straight die roll on the Astronomer, straight die roll. So a straight die roll. Um, Straight die roll. So a 10 will sink him. A 7 gives him a 7 or high. 7 to 10 will give him heavy damage. 4 to 7 light damage. A 3 or lower we missed. Yeah. Get us out of board. It's a 7. We do heavy damage to him. So kaboom. He gets uh, heavy damage. And by the way, that sound was 0. So the astronomer takes a seven. So he takes heavy damage. So he's pretty much toast. So he's now minus two to speed, detect, and attack, and plus one attacked. So the astronomer takes heavy damage, and we should be able to sink him with a gun attack probably on the next turn. So, so he is bad. He's he's hurt. So the torpedo did a good job on the astronomer. And di and pretty much, uh, it's gonna, we're going to send that auxiliary ship to the bottom. So now we do U-boat movement, and his speed is now a two. So I want to get him now. Let me see what the range has to be. The range on these guys in order for them to attack with, because he's got two light. So showing the ship can at a range of zero or one. And what's the range I can hit him with the gun? Let me see here. Because I made a mistake with the last surfacing that close. That was a mistake. So gun attack modifiers. Minus three per range. Plus or minus the U-boat's gunnery skill modifier. Plus one of the target has a heavy damage counter. Okay. So... Minus three per range. I have to get into him in order to uh, in order to hit him. Uh, let's see what we do. All right. We're going to... I have no more torpedoes left ready. So I'm going to try to sink him with the gun. So we're going to move... We're going to surface. And he's got lag. So I want to get him... Let's see. He goes lag. Let's do one, two, I think. One, two. One, two here. And, and his is zero. So his lag is going to be, okay, so that's our movement. Now, his lag, he's zero, so he falls back. So, one, two, 
So I'll move him. So he can't hit me from two from two ranges out, but it's going to be difficult for me to hit him. Although I do have, and I have a lousy, and he has a lousy gunnery skill. And my, uh, he's got a zero plus plus zero gunnery skill. Well, let's see if we get lucky. He's got heavy damage, so if we can do heavy damage to him again, we sink him. Can't use torpedo because I can't ready torpedoes until the refit segment. And you don't go to the refit segment until all these subs uh, perform their tactical, uh, perform the, uh, perform all their combat, the tactical segment. So, let's see. Okay. So we moved there, got the lag movement. Now it is escorts, detect and unmove, move, attack. They can't attack. We're two hexes away. He can't hit us. So we go. So it's going to, we got to fire the weapon. It's going to be difficult to hit this thing, I think. But let's see what we do. So we're going to fire the gun. And uh, by the way, I think who finished off the one? It was, uh, it was, th it was this one. No, it was this one, right? He's down to five because we used one gun. All right. So, so he has, he's going to fire a gun unit. So gunnery attacks. Plus the U-boat against Rick Monus fire minus three per range and range zero to two. So it's going to be hard to hit this guy. So his gunnery strength, his gunnery skill is zero. Okay. So it would be minus three. So it's minus six of the die roll. Ugh. Minus six. So Minus six to the die roll from this far. Maybe I should maybe I should have uh, just closed in on him and sunk him. I don't know. But I didn't want to take the damage. Um remember, U-boats were very fragile still. They were pretty the submarines are still fragile at this time. Um, well, let's try it. So we're gonna reduce it to five, and we're gonna go for a gun, we're gonna go for a gun attack. We're gonna go for a gun attack. So U-boat gun attack. So let's see. So we need, so it's a minus six. So in order for me to hit him, I need to roll a four in order to hit him. A four or a three will hit him with light damage. So we fire the gun. And we got the four. Look at that! Boom! So that does now. That does. That's a. That does three to five. That's light damage on him. So now he's got one heavy and one light. One heavy and one light. And damage, I think, is cute. Let me see if. Let's see here. Gun hit numbers. The modified die roll is. Equal to the target takes light damage and a light damage counter is placed on the target card. Okay, so we took another light damage. So now he has one heavy and two light. And I think I might just close in and try to finish him off if I can. But then I got to worry about taking damage from him. So that's that turn, actually, I believe. Yeah, so that's that turn. So we did heavy and light damage on the astronomer. And now we go on to the, let's see here. Unfortunately, there's zero contacts left, so I can't disengage from contact from combat and then re-hit again. So, oh, what the heck! All right, so that's the that's the that's the attack. So now we go back to the movement phase. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and. He can hit me from zero one. I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay right there. 
I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to move at speed of zero, and he is moving at a speed of zero. So he can't move. So they pretty much just stay right where they're at. So the astronomer is dead in the water, and I'm going to stay where I'm at. So I'm going to move at a range of zero, which I can move at a speed of zero, which I can do. Don't have to move. So we go straight. For, so no movement, no lag. And again, he's out of range. So we get to fire another gunshot. So we make the five, and that will now become a four. Becomes a four. So, actually, I missed that time. I rolled a four, right? So a four minus six is a miss. I needed to roll. I needed to roll. What I need to roll? I needed to roll a ten or a nine to hit, didn't I? Yeah, I need a ten or nine to hit. So he's not hurt. He's still dead in the water. Though. Um. That's right. I need to roll a 10 or a 9 to hit, not a 4. Because it's my thinking plus 6. I'm wrong. It's minus 6 because of the range. Uh, hmm. Ah, uh, gee. You know, it's worth one victory point, one experience point. He can do two light surface. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move at speed. I think I'm just going to get out of here and let him rot. So I don't think I'm going to sink him. I think I can. I think I have to move off the board here. So. Let's see what we got here. So hold on for a moment. I think I'm just going to move off. I think I'm just going to let him rot because I don't want to take any damage to the sub. I was hoping to sink him. Uh, I got the main target. The astronomer is really not that important to sink. So. So let's see what I want to do here. I am going to. I'm instead of I'm going to go back to the movement, and I'm going to move, and I'm just going to move to the convoy wake. I'm just going to get out of here, and he can't move and lag, so he can't move and lag. So he's dead in the water, and he can't he, he can't lag down to me since his range is a zero. So actually, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be heading that way. I would be heading. I would be heading this way, because then you lag, and then he goes here. And I'm not going to fire, and I'll just move up here, and he goes off, and that's it. So, con so that takes care of that. We don't sink him, but we get out of there. I didn't want to attack him. I just didn't think it made sense. Who knows? We may see him again. So we don't sink him, but we did that. We did heavy damage him. So U forty seven. That was the last contact. He goes into the search column, and that is it. So we now add. So we add a stress to the U boat. We add a stress to the U boat. We ready uh, five torpedo two. We put five torpedoes here. So the seven will now become. Let's see. So we put five torpedoes in here. Well, actually, we're supposed to do that in the refit section, but we'll get to that in a second. And we'll put uh, two there. Okay. So that's it. So all three U-boats are now in their search boxes. Are now in their search boxes. So now let's see what we got. So now we go on to the refit segment. The refix segment is an administrative step used to check for U-boat promotion, reduce U-boat stress, and reset the campaign sheet for the next turn. 
So we promote U-boats. The number of experience points a U-boat as determines when it's promoted to the next experience level. So we check for prom crew promotion at the start of the refit segment. So let's see. Uh, Wilhelm Ambrosius U-43 uh, needs eight to pr be promoted, and he has four. So we can't. none of these guys can be promoted. So there's not going to be any promotions from any of the U-boats. Patrol limits. So now we go to patrol. A U-boat completes a patrol when you move it back into a port box. Staying in port does not count as a patrol. Each U-boat can perform a number of patrols equal to the campaign's patrol limit. Uh, none of them are there. None of them are at the patrol limit. None of them return to port, so they're still out in sea. Stress recovery. A U-boat can reduce its number of stress points while in port or when it goes to a forward operating base. A submarine can also reduce stress points if it has a cool special ability. U-43 has a cool. If the U-boat has a cool special ability, reduce this, you also reduce the U-boat stress by one. Reduce the stress points for each U-boat in a port by the number of stress points shown on the refit line for the port. If the U-boat has a cool special ability, reduce the boat. So they're not even a port. So there's not going to be any stress removal. Remove any temporary or lasting damage counters from the U-boat card. Uh, this would these tubes were temporary. It was not lasting, so they're so they're repaired. Stress recovery at sea. Submarines in the same campaign map area as a forward operating base can reduce stress by two stress points. There are no forward operating base, forward operating bases. At sea check. If the campaign is not over and there are no submarines in any sea areas, only in port boxes, subtract two from your Victory point total. This represents allowing the allies to recover while your U-boats are in port. Well, there are none. They're all at sea still. The campaign is not over, and there are submarines in the sea areas. Port restock, sea reload. Each U-boat at sea can reload its ready torpedo section for the submarine with torpedoes on the stored torpedo section and reduce the number of torpedoes in the stored section by one for each torpedo moved to the ready section. So there were four. So now we put two here. So now there are once again, six there. Um, six, there are already six here for U44. You have Tony's board life joins us here. There you go. You have Gator leader. So do I, I also have Gator leader. I have all the leaders. I have all the leader games from DVG that are world war two. I do not have Hornet, Phantom. Uh, I don't have Hornet, Phantom, Thunderbolt. I'm really not interested in modern war. World War II is my favorite time period. So I have Gato Leader, and we will be doing that when we get to the when we when we get there. So, and they're back to here. So that's what we got here. So good to have Tony's board life. Welcome, sir. It's good to see you. A pleasure to have you join me in the chat, my good man. An honor. ID Jester has nothing but good things to say about you. So now we reset the campaign map. Remove all intelligence and U-boat warning counters from the campaign map. So these all disappear for now. And the U-boats are now moving to the search boxes and back into the area. So now we can decide if we want them to patrol, if we want them to patrol another turn or return them to port. Well, right now for victory points, I have seven. I have seven, nine, 11. So I have 11 victory points. So right now we're at poor. We're going to stay out there for another turn. But it's already an hour and 28 minutes. So I think what we're going to do I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. So I'm going to take a look at my board and see what we got. And we're going to stop here for the day, for the night. Uh, we'll continue this patrol tomorrow. We'll do a second patrol. I'm not going to return them to port. Doesn't mean because they're still pretty strong. So we will continue this patrol tomorrow and see if we can get to at least adequate, maybe even good. So we're going to stop here. And we'll back with the strategic section tomorrow. And uh, I, keep, I can keep track of the board as I see what we got here. And we're good to go. So we will stop here and return tomorrow for more U-Boat Leader. Uh, Brian Patterson, Steeler Fan 1933, ID Jester, and Tony's Board Life. Thank you all for joining me today. Please leave, please leave a like on your way uh, exiting the ocean.
Subscribe if you've not done so. And make sure that you hit the bell. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for some more U-Boat Leader. We'll see you guys as we'll continue, as we'll conclude uh, this patrol uh, for the bat for the battle begins September 39 to May 1940. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll complete this patrol.